Hey folks, Paul here with Road Trip Transport for another episode of Tiny Trucker. Um, today's episode, it's been a while, I want to make one, one quick explanation. So what I'm going to be doing um, is only doing my episodes when I'm on the road. When I'm at home, I'm with the family, I'm not going to worry about doing episodes, I'm only going to do episodes when I'm on the road. Um, so that's why you haven't heard from me in a little while. So today, uh, I'm back on the road, I'm actually up in uh, South Bend, Indiana, and I've had a rough load. Uh, I got lied to by a broker basically on what the load was and what it was going to entail and it's ending up to be, it's just it's just a pain in the butt is all it is. But regardless of that, that's not what the episode is today about or today is about. Um, what we're going to talk about is one, it's an awesome end to a day. I'm at my fourth stop of five and there's a beautiful place here. It's quiet. It's outside of South Bend. Um, so I got plenty of room to do this next episode. And it looks like there's some actually good restaurants nearby. So I might go treat myself to a nice dinner. So first things first, I want to give a shout out. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to do an actual, I've done a walkthrough of my equipment. I want to do a review of the Load Trail 40 foot hotshot trailer. I'm going to do a review. I'm going to show you what, what I like and what I don't like about it. I'm going to be honest and I'm not going to bad. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to point out the issues I have with it. And there are some. Um, now. With that being said, the reason why we're doing this today is I wore my I had my Sandcrest uh, trailers hat on today. So shout out to Pat uh, Miller over there. He's the salesman who's been helping me, and I can honestly say this: the little issues with the low trail side, the dealership experience with them has more than made up for it. Um, they gave me a very fair price right up price right out the gate. Um, I thought compared to a lot of other trailers and brands and that type of thing. Uh, they've stood behind it. They're, warrant, they're going to uh, cover the warranty issue that I'm going to show you I had right right when I get there. They're going to cut me a check. Um, so, and, uh, and they've done some really cool custom stuff to this trailer, uh, all for very reasonable price. I mean, they've, they're very fair. Uh, I've had nothing but good luck. I bought three of these trailers from them. Um, I'm going to pick up my second one here pretty soon. Uh, they're being patient with me. They've helped me with the, you know some of the stuff I had to ship there. Um, yeah, they're, they're wonderful. So I can't say good enough things about Sandcrest. If you want to buy a trailer, I would highly recommend them. You'll have to just make the decision on the load trail. Now I want to point out the load trail is different than Sandcrest. Sandcrest is just their dealer. Um, load trail, of course they're affiliated, but at the end of the day, it is, it isn't their, um, uh, it isn't, they don't make the trailer. So Let's get into the load trail. So this is just, we're not reviewing Sandcrest. I've already given them an awesome review. So let's review the load trail trailer. All right, here it is. The load trail, uh, 40 foot hotshot trailer. Um, now I've done some modifications to it and uh, some additions uh, because it, this thing's gonna work. So I set it up to work. You can see the remainder of this load that I have now tarped and untarped three times. And we'll be doing again two more tomorrow, or to, yeah, tomorrow. So that's why it's being, that's why it's annoying. All right, so let's start at the front of this. And I'm gonna start with this deck on the neck. You see this up here, this, this up top piece. It's an eight foot deck on the neck. Uh, I only did one of my trailers with this deck on the neck. And the reason why was I was very skeptical of whether or not it would pay for itself. So far out of 24 loads, 25 counting my next one that I'm gonna be picking up, uh, I've used it twice. One time it was actually necessary, uh, and the other time was more for convenience. I haven't really used it other than that, and I'm going to do a test to see if it's hurting my fuel efficiency. If it's not hurting my fuel efficiency, uh, I might get you know some more with it, but if it's actually hurting my fuel economy, uh, I'm probably not going to put that on anymore. Uh, just because it doesn't seem to give me a lot of advantages. Technically, it makes me a 48-foot step deck, uh, but you can't put a whole lot of weight up there. It's rated for 7,000 pounds. No problem there. The problem is the truck. The truck can't handle that much weight right up over the hitch. So uh, you have to be very strategic about what you put up there. And I just haven't had uh, any scenarios yet, really, other than that one that I needed uh, that I needed it for. So, uh, And even on that one, if I didn't have it, I probably still could have figured out how to get that piece on. So... To start with the review, um, inside the bed here, you'll see what they've got some pretty massive hooks on it. I am imagine that's because I got a 30K coupler. Uh, so I bought a 30K coupler, and I'll explain what you, you might ask. Um, 
uh, well, you'll fit, I'll, I'll get to that when I get to the axles. So everything on here, including my hitch plate, you can see is rated for 30K. Uh, I'll explain why I did that in, in a little bit. Sandcrest, thank you for this. The holes are where you put your, your well, these hooks won't fit in those holes. So Sandcrest, uh, Phil over there who owns it, uh, did this, welded those D-rings on. Man, I mean, that looks like a machine did it. That is uh, awesome. He, ju he just knocked that out for me. Thank you for that. That's awesome. So um, 30K coupler, <clears throat> I added that. Let's start with problem number one, and this is Load Trail did this. I want to show you something, okay? So they have a sticker here. Warning, do not exceed 25,000 pounds. Now I'm being informed that because it has this big ring on here, and I'm going to double check it, but because it has this big ring on here, it is a 30K coupler, they just stuck the wrong sticker on. Well, that's a problem. This is a, supposed to be a professional manufacturer. They shouldn't be making these mistakes. You'll see this isn't the only one. There's a bunch of these little things that are uh, really rough. So let's move on. Um, 30K coupler, like I said, deck on the neck. This first thing I want to show you is, and here's another little issue, okay? So this is the spare tire. Spare tire, because I have the deck on the neck, this actually swings down. That's not the problem. The problem I have is just simply this. Again, this is from the factory this way. So here is the latch that holds that on. And you can see it's welded on here. Fine, okay. They welded on, but like, oops, getting grease on myself. Um, but look at this, this thing barely catches on it. This spare tire has got to weigh all of 120 pounds with the frame. I mean, it's heavy. And this is all they have holding it. Now, we do have a safety chain here, but still, it hasn't fallen off or broken, but I'm worried that it is. This, this seems a little bit like, feels like somebody did it in their backyard, not from the factory. And this was from the factory this way. So that's a, one little issue I had. Another little issue I have. Now, this tank. I want to show you guys this. Really cool. Uh, Sandcrest did this. Um, I actually uh, had the idea to mount my spare fuel tank because I rent my trucks. I had the idea to mount my spare fuel tank. So we actually had a company. I uh, did some research. We had a company make that tank because it's a custom-sized tank to fit in there. And then Sandcrest installed it, wired it, put the pump on. And there, the hose, I really... I wish I could show you. Apparently, they came up with a much better way to hang the hose. They're going to add that to this trailer this week when I drop the trailer off. But they put it on my other ones. A much better way to hang the hose than just up over the, the bars. So that'll be really cool. It's got a locking cap. And this is also up top here. See if you can see it. Uh, let's flip the light. There it is. It's got a light right there. So it actually lights this whole area up too at night. Awesome. Um, here is the light switches. So this switch does that light under the, underneath there uh, for the fuel. And now this switch, we had they added this too. Check this bad boy out. Uh, the back switch, boom. Oops, wrong switch. <laughs> boom. I mean, this thing will light up a football stadium. So that's really nice. I've actually used it once. It was really handy uh, for unloading at night. Another upgrade I did. Um, Again, those are these, and they're wired really, really well. They took their time, and and this is all; those are all Sandcrest dealership editions, and they charged me very reasonable rates, and they did an extremely good professional job on everything. So very proud of that. I did upgrade to the 25k. Uh, I think they're 25k each. I can't remember now. Uh, I think they're 25k each, but I could be wrong. Um, jacks. And they're two-speed drop leg jacks. So that's just like a semi-truck. You pull the handle out, and it's got a higher speed gear for cranking a lot quicker. And then a low speed gear to lift it when there's a lot of weight on there. Did upgrade to that. I would highly recommend that because, uh, man, if you didn't do that, you'd be cranking a lot. And it really didn't cost much. We did upgrade as well to the bigger step on the front. Um, that's just a safety deal. Uh, I think that it doesn't really cost anything. Toolboxes. Now, because I did add the fuel tank, you can see it there. Because I did add the fuel tank, I uh, lost the toolbox there. So I did have to add an extra toolbox. Not a big deal. Again, Sandcrest, uh, there's, there they got their logo on it, um, which I don't mind. I, I really am very appreciative of what they what they did or, or how much they've helped me. Um, so all my equipment's in there. There's another tool. There's a matching toolbox on the other side. Um, let's come down it. I'm trying to remember if there was any other issues, some downsides. Okay, this box here is not a toolbox. This box here controls 
my uh, I upgraded this trailer with air ride suspend air ride suspension and electric over hydraulic disc brakes. The electric over hydraulic disc brakes are awesome. They have amazing stopping power and they're relatively low maintenance and the air ride actually has paid off quite a bit i've probably out of that 25 loads i've done i'll show you the air ride underneath there i've done uh there you go there's the air ride i've probably actually done um five or six of the loads required air ride so we're gonna get into a couple of negatives here a couple things um Again, this just little things that, that irk me, all right? That shouldn't be this way from the factory. Okay, so this all came from the factory, very nice. Um, uh, Sandcrest wired in all my lights and my fuel pumps to this battery, which is awesome because it runs even when I'm not plugged into the truck. And here you have the air compressor for the air ride, and you have the elect uh, electric over hydraulic brakes, brake reservoir. Now, from the factory, this thing's loose, and it's been loose. Um, it's just like they forgot to tighten a bunch of stuff down. So there's an issue. Now again, Sandcrest is gonna take care of that. That's no big deal, but um, but it's just little things. Uh, this switch likes to turn. It wasn't tightened up very well. Um, some some weird things that really bothered me. Oh, the door, the latch handles. Some of the latch handles, these nuts here, about half of them were loose. They didn't even tighten them down. So it was, I had to fix all that. Um, yeah, and this is from the factory this way. It shouldn't be this. Um, so downside there. All right, let's go to the tires and axles. So what I did with this trailer was I had to put on 12K, and this is where we're going to explain the 30K. I did 12K axles. Now here's the reason why. 12K axles with 17 and a half inch, uh, 17 and a half inch, um, 16 ply tires. Now there's a reason why I did that. The tire ratings total are like 30, 32,000 pounds, but the axle ratings are only 24,000 pounds, 12 each. The reason why I did that is I'm paranoid about tires. I want these tires to last. I don't want to overload them and I don't want to be dealing with blowouts as minimal as possible. So that's why I did a little bit overboard there. Now, Paul, you ask, 24,000 pounds is all you can, that's the limiting factor, right? Why 30K couplers and 30K everything else? Very good question. So what a lot of people miss, and I've actually had some trailer manufacturers not even understanding this, is that 24,000 pound axles, this is not a 24,000 pound trailer. Right? And the reason being, not all that weight sits on the axles, right? So when you think 24K, all I can put is 24K on the trailer, no total including the weight of the trailer no because see what happens you put about anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of the weight on the truck so the truck is holding some of that weight so if i put thirty thousand pounds total that includes the weight of the trailer which is about 9800 pounds so if i put you know let's say ten thousand pounds if i put twenty thousand pounds on the trailer if i i'm supposed to load it right which i need to then about six thousand or uh or twenty percent will sit on the truck. Um, now the truck's gotta be rated for that, of course, but regardless, that leaves 24,000 on the trailer. So that's more than enough axle um, for for this. I'm not loading this to 30K. I, I'm just merely pointing out that, because that's too much, 6,000 is too much for those Rams, but um, in the bed, I, it's not, okay, yeah. It's over the rating is what I'm saying. It, I'm sure the Ram would do it, but anyway, so, I went with the black wheels. I thought they were pretty cool. Now, this is another thing Sandcrest installed for me, and I love these, uh, I think. I haven't really, I gotta analyze them, but uh, my dad runs them on his semi, and not a lot of people run these things on uh, on trailer tires, but trailer tires are expensive, and so what I did, I'm gonna show you inside here, that silver piece who runs all the way around is what called Centromatics. Uh, they're, I ordered them separately and, and they installed them for me. Um, now, what they do, hopefully, is they're going to help, they help balance your tires, your duels, as they're going on the road, helping with tire wear. Everything's about tire wear. Uh, not, not everything's about tire wear, but I'm saying like, you know, the longer I can make my tires last, the better. Now, we're gonna get to the next problem. This is from the factory. And Sandcrest 
and I in the same way, does not like this. Um, there are threads showing on the nuts. Now they're tight, and if you look from here to where the thread is, you actually have, because of that flange nut, you actually do have one time stud thread engagement. So it's enough thread. It's, it's absolutely enough thread. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is a DOT officer seeing that and saying, uh, you're shut down until you get that fixed. This is from the factory again, this way. I, this, is, this is a problem, not because it's unsafe. Uh, like, you know, I'm a bolting guy. That's what my previous job was, an engineer for bolting and um, for a bolting company. And one-time thread engagement is plenty. That's, that's not the issue. The issue is simply a DOT officer may not take that explanation from me. So he's going to see this and say, nope, that's unsafe. Uh, that's my problem with those. Again, it just seems weird that they would have that setup from the factory. Now, they did fix it. Dexter fixed it. Um, Dexter Axles, that's who makes these axles. And uh, and Sandcrest is going to swap those lug nuts out to a different style when, when I get in. So they are fixing that as well. Now we're going to get to the next thing. Mud flaps. This really bugs me. It's like they, it's, it, they're a professional trailer manufacturer, but they have too many little things that are, that are just not professional, okay? These mud flaps do not fit. I'm gonna see if you can see here, but they had to cut a notch. Can you see that? It, yeah, so they had to cut a notch in the mud flap, and it still doesn't really fit, but they had to cut a notch to get it to fit, and then I don't think you can see it, but they didn't line the, let's see if you can see this or not. Uh, you can't see it, but the bolt holes don't line up either, and all of the bolts were loose. They were hand tight. I almost lost all my mud flaps. They were hanging on by one bolt each. Uh, I had to go tighten them up, and then, yeah, so that's, again, it's not a huge deal, but it sh they should have mud flaps. If they make a trailer, they should have mud flaps that fit it. They shouldn't have universal mud flaps. They got to trim the fit. That just uh, doesn't make sense. Now, the next thing, we're going to crawl under this. Here's another bad thing that happened. We're going to crawl under this trailer right here. I'm going to show you something. Okay, so underneath here, if you can see it, um, yep, right there. So that is the brake line, okay? Now, the brake line, and you'll see it better on this other side. I can show you. Uh, yeah, so the brake line runs, let's see. Okay, I don't know where we were, but uh, I accidentally canceled it. So let's get back to this recording. Uh, I don't know where we were, but I was explaining these brake lines. They are, uh, here's the problem, okay? So right here, if you can see that brake line there, um, they had it routed from the factory. And on one of my next trailers too, we, we double checked it. And sure enough, it was routed so that you see this block right there? That block right, let's see if I can get my finger in the in the picture to show you that block right there. That block is designed to sit on this axle when you deflate the airbags. And per, and I'll get back out for one of the trailer here, per load trail, do not load trailer while airbags are inflated. So if that's the case, they shouldn't design it or have the brake lines rotted so that they would get between that. And what ended up happening, it actually did happen, was I lost, uh, it pinched one of those brake lines, blew a brake line. I lost my trailer brakes with a 16,000 pound deuce and a half from the military uh, on this trailer. I lost my trailer brakes. Now, that's not safe. That is the, that's the worst thing that I've had. The other ones I'm nitpicking, but, but, that one's dangerous. That one should not happen. I mean, that that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Load trail. Uh, that shouldn't. Two of my three trailers had that problem. Look, I'm I'm sorry. I I'm just giving a review on 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 the trailer. I'm trying to give the good and the bad. So to counteract, I want to give a couple good things. This was not an option. If you can see, I've got this was just comes with it. I've got these lights. And all these are, the only required one is that one right there. These are additional. And I tell you what, they look awesome at night. This trailer looks really good at night. It's all lit up. It's a, it's a, it looks really good at night. I, I do like that. I, I like that they added that extra. Um, so 
and and you don't pay extra for that it just comes with it and i think that's that's pretty cool that they do that um i really do like that uh from the factory so let's go back here at the back here you'll see what i added was the max ramps i will never not have these on a trailer awesome uh what happens is you you release this it flips over well let's do it so you release, you release this huh very simply one-handed there's spring assist on the back here so one-handed we're gonna grab this boom now it's spring assisted so you can see it's not actually touching the ground now look how high those ramps are they're up off the ground by a good six inches well it's really cool is when you deflate the airbags, that ramp sits flat on the ground. So when I load something heavy, the back of this trailer isn't carrying the weight that ramp is, uh, and it creates and it and it keeps the back of the trailer from from flexing as as a as the vehicle goes up. So really cool. Uh, and when you flip them back over, they're not light enough to do with a pinky, but they are. You, you can do them one handed they become part of the deck. They're level with the deck, so you can put stuff on them. A um, couple little nitpicky things here. One of them is that your uh, your mounts for like, you know, your stake pockets and your pipe rail, uh, when you chain something up here, it comes, your chain comes up against the ramp here and then to whatever you're chaining. And it actually pulls, it pulls these ramps towards each other and it causes, I don't know if you see this, but it actually bends your bracket here. Not a huge deal, but uh, it does. You're relying on those brackets to hold those ramps because they're being pulled in. Uh, it also has these bars like this. You slide this bar out, pull this pin, slide this bar out, pin it from here to here with the ramps, with the ramps up. So that if you load a tractor and you can't get the ramps to drop down, it's no big deal. You can just leave them up and down. Come around to the back. Again, I love the lights in the back. They added a few extra. I got three on each side plus the three in the middle. Looks really good at night. Now, again, I'm going to nitpick here. But again, these are all things that shouldn't be this way out of the factory. So, right here, <laughs> and I'm getting a little nitpicky here. Uh, I know. And you can't really tell in the, in the picture. But this second light right here is tilted. You really notice it when they're on. Because then when you're standing back here, there's a nice straight line right here. Or I'm sorry, there's a nice straight line right here. And over here, it's kind of a frowny face. It kind of comes over and then drops down. So it's like they didn't get the cut the whole just right. Uh, like I said, it's a very nitpicky. You can't even notice it right now. You don't really notice it till they're on. So I'm not going to give them too much trouble about that. But it should, shouldn't be like that, in my opinion. Maybe I'm being nitpicky. So come around to this side, not much different. Uh, the only thing I added on this side was these rub with was these winch rails. <laughs> Here's another one. There's just too many little things wrong with this from the factory. I probably, honestly, I probably won't be buying another load trail um, just because of these little issues. Like too many, too many of them. That so let's look at these uh, ratchets. One of thing. Because the mud flap doesn't fit, it also hits the. It fits. So you got to push the mud flap out of the way to move it because the mud flap doesn't fit. Come on, load trail, what the heck? And then the other thing is these little tabs here that catch in the winch. Okay, half of them when I got to my first load ever, half of these were flipped over the other way. Okay, which means they don't work. Not a huge deal. I was just able to pop this bolt out. Slide them all out. Same thing up here because these were all back. Half of these were backwards too. Pop that bolt out. Slide them all out. Flip it over. Put them back in. I shouldn't have to be doing that from the factory. That's all. I'm too many little things. So, um, so there it is. The review. I like a lot of things about it. I didn't mention pulling. It pulls really well. It tracks very straight. It rides really nicely. Um, I, and functionally, it's really good. Okay. I'm going to, I am going to say that functionally, it's really good. I've had some really heavy loads on here and I don't, the flex in the, in the, you know, between the axles in the truck that I see on like big Texas, big Texas, I see going on the road. They got a huge, they look like they're smiling at you. I've had some pretty heavy load on there and I don't see that on this one near as much. 
Uh, so I'll give them that. I, I think the build quality is pretty good outside of the outside of that issue. The light it looks very sharp at night. I love the I love the uh, this is all hand painted. Personally, I like it. A lot of people don't. I really like it. I think that's a cool personal touch. That's all hand painted, and it's cool. Some people don't like it. I find it interesting that there's a lot of little errors and, and problems in it um, because it was hand painted. You know, like this little guy right here. Something happened right there. The guy got distracted or whatever, but uh, boss walked in. I don't know. I, I don't know. From a distance, it looks really good, and I kind of like it that it has that personal touch. Maybe I'm being ridiculous, but um, but uh, I don't. I the reason why I'm not upset about that is because I don't think it was supposed to be perfect. If that was supposed to be perfect, then they would have a machine doing it, not a person, um, or they would be putting you know vinyl pinstriping on there. Uh, but the rest of this should be perfect, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Um, so it pulls very, very well. It rides really nice. The air ride is awesome. Uh, even, you know, not just for the load, but for me, it, it, it's much easier on the driver. Um, so overall, I am pleased. I would say I'm somewhat satisfied with this trailer. I like it. It's good. It will do its job. Uh, there's just, I don't know if I'm going to buy another load trail simply because of all of those little nitpicky deals added together. One or two of them I could get over, but one, a very big, the brake line, a huge safety issue. And then the other things, just a lot of little things that add up to really shouldn't be, they shouldn't be missing all of this stuff when they, when they do this. Um, uh, especially at a professional company like Load Trail is, is supposed to be. So there you go. There's my review on the load trail. It's a, like I said, it's a 40 foot, 24 K axles, 30 K couplers, um, and air ride and electric over hydraulic disc brakes. So if you have any questions, let me know. Oh, I do want to, uh, two things. First, somebody did ask the question what my insurance was. Uh, I do want to address that. So insurance through enterprise is only on the truck. It's only damage, physical damage to the truck. Your comprehensive, or your, your what is it, comprehensive? No, liability. Your liability insurance and your trailer insurance and your cargo insurance have to be through a different company. But damage insurance, physical damage, you can get through Enterprise on the truck. Uh, I think I think it's 225 a month. It might be wrong. It might be 275 I don't remember. And that might vary for, I, you know, I don't know if there's something to do with, you know, if my record's good, if it's better or worse. I think it varies depending on, you know, how your record is. So um, somebody did ask that question. I wanted to answer that. And as I mentioned, we'll flip this around. Uh, no, we won't because it's annoying. Um, as I mentioned, I don't have the hat on, so you don't need to see me, but I am going to give away a road trip transport hat. I will explain in episode 10. I will explain the uh, challenge, and whoever gets it first will get to pick either a blue or an orange road trip transport hat. So, um, yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And like I said, today we're doing a review, so today is not our going to the glass. Today is just a review of the Load Trail trailer. And uh, I, I hope I wasn't, I, I'm not, I pointed out a lot of the negative things. I am saying I'm sat somewhat satisfied with the trailer. There's a lot of good things about it. There's just too many little nitpicky bad things. So um, thank you all. Like, subscribe, and we will see you next time.